people who was abused as a child. She doesn't want to have a relationship with a man who's abusive. But here, in her mind, she wouldn't want a relationship with him. She does it anyhow. Yeah. Over and over. That's right. So, the lady who's been abused doesn't want to be abused in her mind. She has a, in her thoughts, she's saying, I don't want a crappy guy who's going to knock me around. Right? But why then does she get into a relationship with well, She's a victim. Well, there's a feeling in her that's created her she's into a victim. Subordinate. Yeah, there's the feeling of I'm lesser. There's yeah. a feeling of I'm unworthy for anything more than this. And that feeling is what creates her truth, what creates her reality. And there's a fear of being abandoned by this jerk. Exactly. And that's kind of hard because you can't live in eight dollars now. Yeah. No, that, that, that's that, a fact. And there's a lot of choices she is making as a result. A right? And so and so it is actually her own feelings, not necessarily her thoughts, that are creating the environment. All of our thoughts are the process of firstly emotions that are within us that generate these thoughts. Yeah? And the key, the key is for us to deal with the emotions and the thoughts automatically change. So let, let's say for example, let's say in a moment of rage you have a feeling within you that you want to kill someone. Let's say. All right? Let's say somebody has been really, you know, done some really horrible things to you. And in this moment of rage, you just feel like you just like to, you know, get rid of them. Right? Now that moment of rage came from a deeper emotion within. Right? And if you release that deeper emotion within, and the same event comes along later, you will not feel that. You will not feel like you want to kill them anymore. Does that make sense? Once you release the emotion that caused that original thought to arise, it will disappear. And this is one of the major problems with religion today, because they teach you, you must not do this, you must not, you know, uh, murder, you must not commit adultery, you must not lie, you must not steal, all these you must nots. Now, while I agree with them in, in terms of a moral way, to actually tell somebody they must not do something without dealing with the emotion as to why they want to do it, just creates a huge setup inside of themselves of disharmony. What we need to do instead is to deal with the emotion inside as to why I would like to murder or why I would like to commit adultery or why I'd like to steal or why I'd like to lie. Let go of that emotion. When that emotion is gone, you don't ever have a desire again to steal, lie, murder or commit adultery. Well, if you're brainwashed enough, you don't have that desire to <laughs> steal, cheat. You don't think so? Oh, I, I believe it because I was brainwashed as a child. <laughs> And I don't have those emotions to do bad things that I lie and I don't steal and yeah. I commit adultery. Yeah. It just doesn't enter, enter my your mind. mind. And it doesn't enter your mind. Honor your father and mother. Uh, I, I can't believe these kids today. They have no respect. <laughs> <laughs> no, they don't have respect for the thing. But they don't have respect for the parents, kind of, because the, the parents have taught them to not have respect. That's true. They let them do what and, they do. And what is respect anyway? I don't know. Just yeah. doing the right thing? No. Is it? I don't know what respect What were you going to say? Love. 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 Yeah. Is respect love? I don't know. I don't know. See, you look at the concept of respect today on earth. The concept is respect of a parent. What does the parent normally expect? If the child respects them, do what they say, don't they talk say. back. Exactly, do everything they say, don't talk back, and all these things, right? Mm -hmm. right. But that's not what. That's not true. That's, that's not, not love, respect. and that's not love either. That's fear. That's fear. Well, maybe they need. No, they don't. No one needs. No one needs fear. You don't have my niece <laughs> that my brother is dealing with. Yeah, but but yeah. remember, every child's emotion is the direct result of their parents' error. And so, if, if once the parent deals with their emotion, the child will no longer treat them in that way. And so, this is why it's important to look at self every single time. I was talking to this lady, when was that? Uh, we were talking to a lady who was talking about her son. 
Uh, I can't remember where it was now. It was one of our. Oh, I think it was in Gippy, yeah. We were talking to this lady. This lady was talking about her son who um, she was really, really angry and upset with her son. Right? She felt that her son, from the day he was born, was just an angry little kid. And she was sick of dealing with him. He was now a teenager, like he's 13 or 14. And he's been angry with her her entire life since he was born. And I said to her, well, that's because of your emotion. Mm -hmm. Where else did this child who was pristine at the time of incarnation right, get all of these emotions? And the answer is from her emotions. And when we started focusing on her dislike of men, which was the source of her son's rebellion, she, she got very angry and upset about all of the issues about how much she dislikes men within herself. When she allowed herself to deal with all of those things, because there were all abuse issues involved with them, childhood abuse issues for her involved in them, her sons, that she's had a number of them, uh, all stopped being angry with her. And she didn't talk to them at all. Just because they, she cried, she dealt with her emotions of anger towards men by feeling them and experiencing them and losing them. And all of a sudden, her sons, who were angry with her before then, and now not angry with her. That's interesting. You see this happening all the time, actually. And the more people who understand it, the faster the transactions happen. Really? Yeah, because it, cause if you, you think as a parent, often what, what happens is the child is, say, disrespectful or you know, angry or whatever other things the child's feeling. What's the first reaction of most parents? is to sit down with the child, talk to the child, punish the child, restrict the child, do all of these different things. Control. <laughs> now, really when you think about it, the parent's not looking at the cause. The cause is the parent's emotion. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. One of the two parent's emotions, probably. Or maybe both, collectively together. Right? If the parent sat down first and said, well, right, let's look at what emotion within me would cause this child to get this way, and change the emotion within them, they may never even need to have the chat with the child. Yeah. Now there are some emotions within the child that do come from its environments that are not from the parent. In other words, they go to school and they pick up something, or they, you know, an emotion from school. Or, and those kind of emotions, obviously, the parent just needs to help them work through them themselves. And obviously they're not the result of the parent's emotion. But the majority of the child's emotions are certainly the result of the parents. Very hard as a parent to first admit that. But once you admit it and go through the process of changing emotionally, you'll find the children change very, very rapidly. Very rapidly. And it's, uh, it's just wonderful when you start seeing the relationship between cause and effect. Yeah. Well, how's everyone feeling? Good. That's enough for today? Not enough. <laughs> <laughs> so was, res was love not the answer to respect? No. Okay. Love, uh, love does not demand respect. I thought if maybe the parent taught love to the child, the child would return love and there would be a respect of, of the individual in that. Yeah, but the whole terminology of respect is really an intellectual one rather mm. than an emotional one. Yeah. Mm. When, we're, when we're looking for a feeling from our children, isn't it a feeling more of gratitude and appreciation and, and thankfulness and those kind of feelings? Mm -hmm. And aren't those kind of feelings, those kind of feelings, if we really want them, don't they really just come from the heart? So how can you manufacture, like, it's a bit like with, when a child does something wrong, right? Let's say a child does something wrong, such as like goes up to another child and kicks it in the shins, right? So from most parents would think, well, that wasn't good, right? <laughs> Although some parents would probably be glad. Well, it's your kid, it's your kid that did the kicking. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's the child that's so But let's say the child goes up and the parents concerned, right? The parents concerned, the child's just kick the other child in the shins. Now. What a lot of parents do is say, go up and say sorry to little Johnny. Mm -hmm. Go up and say sorry. Now, if the child doesn't 
feel sorry in their heart, what do they learn when we tell them this? All they learn is that if I go up and say sorry, later on I can kick them in the shins again <laughs> and say sorry too. You know? And it doesn't do anything. Mum and Dad's not going to punish me. Nothing's going to happen, right? Because I'm just going to say sorry and kick them in the shins and I'll get away with this. Also, the parents are not seeing the truth, and that is there, there must be anger within the child for them to go up and kick the other child. And that anger had to have come from the child's immediate environment, whether that's the parents themselves and their emotions or something happening immediately in their environment. The parents need to look more sincerely at that issue. Now, if you go and clout the child, what are you teaching your child there? Well, when someone's bigger, they can clout you. Yeah. Right? yeah. That's what you're teaching them, aren't you? If you're bigger, then you can get clouted by someone. So what's going to happen as they get bigger? They're going to feel that if there's someone smaller than them that's done something that they believe is wrong, even if it's not, and they believe it, what they're going to do? Just clout them up, right? Punch them one in the nose or whatever. So the real issue for a lot of these things is is that often we're not seeing the true cause emotionally of all these things. Does that make sense? We're not looking at the true cause. So the issue of respect, for example, of children respecting their parents. Hey, Jerry, the, the issue of children respecting their parents is, is one that's pretty... If a, if a child does not respect the parent, then there's something the parent has taught the child that is a spirit of unthankfulness and an ingratitude in the child, and that's why they don't respect the parent. Does that make sense? Yes. Now, the parent can go and demand respect if that's what they want to do, but in the end, it doesn't deal with any of the causes. And unless you deal with the cause, nothing is going to change. Uh, you can demand respect. You look at all the laws of the land of this, of this country, for example. You've literally got hundreds of thousands of laws most of you have got no idea what, in fact, they are, because you've got so many, right? <laughs> and in that's, that's in, in fact why you have a lawyer, <laughs> because there's meant to be people who have meant to know all of these laws, and even they don't know the laws, and so they have a lawyer's assistant <laughs> to help them research all these laws. And then, you know, there's all the taxation laws, and there's this law and that law and everything. All these laws, they're all to, done to change someone's behaviour, aren't they? Most mm -hmm. of the time. Mm -hmm. The taxation laws are to change your behaviour. So in, a, so that, in other words, instead of getting 100% of what you earn, it changes your behaviour so that you have to give 40% or 30% or whatever it is to the government and there's, they, you know, you're indoctrinated as to why you should do all of these things. And these laws are created to change your behaviour. But what really changes behaviour? It's how a person feels inside. Mm -hmm. So what do you get? You get this black market thing going on, right? Cash deals underhand, all those things. Why are all those things happening? Because the original thing, which is the heart, is not getting changed anyway. And so people are going to want to break the law because they don't feel it's fair and there's lots of other things going on. Now, so what do they do then? They make another law that if you break the law, this is what's going to happen. So there's another set of laws that... If you break this law, we're going to do this to you. Right? And then they have a whole set of, set of law enforcers. Right? There's, this whole, there's this whole huge industry created you know, to help you deal with the effect and not address the cause. And the, 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 but how much of the industry is focused on dealing with a person's heart? Almost zero, right? There are some, but there's mostly very, very few people involved in the industry of changing people's emotions, of getting the emotions that are within a person that cause them to do certain actions out of them. And we've got to be very careful as, as parents of children that we don't fall into the same trap that the society in generally, generally has fallen into with regard to law. And you look at it as parents, we often create laws that only deal with an effect and they don't address the cause. And it's a much, much cleverer system if you can find a law that deals with the cause and imply that, and impose that law. And one thing to remember about God is that every single law God has ever made always deals with the cause, never with an effect. It always deals with what drives you to do it, and never with the fact that you've dealt, done it. 
Does that make sense? This is why, this is why it said in the Bible, if, if you just look at a woman, you have committed adultery with her in your heart. So if you look at a woman lustfully, you've already committed adultery. In other words, the law is already imposed upon you from that moment because it's the soul that the law operates upon, not your action. Yeah. Now the action causes further damage to your soul and there's another law associated with that as well from God's perspective, but the actual cause is the soul's desire. The laws of the universe, every one of these people are in the first sphere, in the first sphere, not because necessarily of what they did, but because of how they felt right, when they did what they did. You look at the first example that we had today, that group of spirits who were there, she, she said, I didn't do anything wrong when I was on earth. I did not murder when I was on earth. I didn't do anything damaging to other people. I don't understand why I'm, why I'm here. Yeah. But she f had feelings within her. And the feeling within her was, those people are lesser than I am. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. That's the feeling that was within her. And that caused her to be in that location. Does that make sense? Just the feeling within mm -hmm. her. She didn't even act upon it. She didn't murder any of them. Right? And she, she didn't even realize it was wrong at first. And she didn't even realize it was wrong, but it was still the feeling within her. Yeah. Well, it's not always wrong <coughs> to hire someone to help you to work, or if you pay them adequately and if you a good job for them. Certainly. That's not wrong. Certainly. I don't know the circumstances where they're slaves. Yes, they were servants. She called them servants, but I think she referred to them as slaves. Thought so maybe you got a different picture. Well, no, no, they were they were they were servants, and and but they treated them as slaves. Yeah. They they treated them like you you can't interact. Well, what was it? Do you remember her father's emotions? Well, actually, I could probably feel there were pictures coming from her in her mind about things that happened mm -hmm. as she was discussing it. And one of the pictures was when she had an act of kindness towards one of these servants, her father punished her for her act of kindness to one of the servants. Mm -hmm. right? Now, what's going on there? Eventually she learned that you don't treat these people kindly. Yeah. Yeah. And so there's then the feeling or the emotion within the soul. Now, in her case, quite a lot of these emotions came from others, came from her father and her mother and so forth. So there are very few law of compensation effects you will need to work through for herself. Uh, in other cases, they often go down the track of further damage, you know. So my father treats servants badly, my father beat them or whatever, and so what do I do? I go down the same track and I decide I'm going to beat them too. Well obviously there's a further damage now that's going to occur to my soul. It's no longer just my father did it and so I'm afraid of my father. Mm -hmm. It's now I'm choosing to do it. You know? So, and every one of these things that we do all have different laws that are involved that affect the soul. And the beauty of a father is that, I'm talking now about our Heavenly Father, is that every one of God's laws deal with the true cause of why the person chose to do what they did. Hmm. Every one of them. And you can't get out of it. You can't weasel your way out of it, buy your way out of it, <laughs> right? You can't do any of these things. Just try to ignore it. You, you can't just try to ignore it. You can't do any of these things. From God's perspective, it will be exposed. In other words, the, the law, you know, the laws that we make, we make and enforce them. The law that God make are simply enforced, self-enforcing. They are very much so. It, so they enforce themselves. They enforce themselves. And our, the laws we make don't work. That's right, because, because they don't enforce themselves. Yeah. I, uh, in 1962, I worked. I, I taught one year at school in Texas, and then I went to California and taught a year there. Yeah. I was absolutely amazed at the laws that they had in California in 1962. Yeah. Yeah. And it's and the whole school system was gone. If we make more laws, we have more tests, we more do more of these things, we'll finally get what we want. Exactly. And it hasn't been working. Exactly. It never works. And it never will. <laughs> yeah. It's when. We're kind of slow on the uptake sometimes. Yeah, well, this is the problem. We think we're going if we do more of the same, then yeah. it's going to be better result. But, but more, more of the same of what does not work still yeah. does not work. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. 
and we don't come to realize that. Mm -hmm. Whereas God's, this is the beauty, once you learn more and more about God's laws, you start seeing the perfection of every one of them, and you start seeing how beautiful the whole thing is in the sense that they're all self-governing. God doesn't sit up there saying, oh, you just did a bad thing, oh, you just did a bad thing, like, I'll just write that down in my book. Right? You did a bad thing, just write that down in my book. And you did a bad thing, I'll just write that down. Oh, you did a good thing, I'll just write that down in the positive side. Right? God doesn't do that, right? doesn't need to, because all of God's laws are all... We're not ourselves. Yeah, we're all this, uh, it's all self-enforcing, right? So God can just enjoy <laughs> watching the beauty. Wow. So, are you having fun yet? <laughs> yeah, watching the beauty of His creation unfold, right? And... Uh, and, and this is why when you see you know when you see how powerful it is to make laws that deal with causes you start understanding how important causes are and how how little of little importance dealing with an effect is uh, so punishing a child for something they've done wrong does very very little for the child aside from instilling fear into them does very very little Dealing, like, one of, the, one of the things my boys often said to me was, uh, my boys got to the point where they said to me, they would rather get a smack from mum than have a sit down with dad. Because <laughs> in the end, what happened was, emotionally, they, they felt, like, they, they felt the pain of their choices when they sat down and we discussed them all from God's perspective. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And mum didn't do that with them. So they felt, yeah, they, they felt a strong, you know, they, they felt that every time they sat down to discuss something with dad, there was going to be some emotions arise and there was going to be some processing happen, happening. And they realised that that was, a, that was the most powerful effect. And for that same reason, when they were with their mum, they were totally out of control. <laughs> And when they were with myself, generally they were well-mannered and in control. Uh, but it was just because of the different ways in which we dealt with the situations that occurred. Uh, and I certainly didn't deal with them perfectly, because there, there were times when I certainly did it in disharmony with love. Uh, but when you look at the way God works, all of those laws are so perfect, right? Uh, all of those laws are so so governed towards cause, mm -hmm. and every single you know every single spirit you talk to in the spirit world, in the first sphere, and the other spheres, all of them are all like they're there because of the causes within themselves that cause them to be placed there. They're not there for some indeterminate reason. They're not there unjustly either. They're there because of the laws that have imposed the pen it, their penalties on their own soul. And God didn't have to do any of it because he already just set it all up in the beginning. He didn't have to write down in his little black book. So God doesn't write down in his little black book. I think in the Bible it says that God has a book of life and a book of judgment. In the Old Testament. Yeah, and, and that's not true, obviously, right? Because God doesn't need one. <laughs> we saw that in Bruce Almighty, just the paper. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when he was answering the emails. <laughs> yeah. Lots of paperwork, lots of folders. Yeah. yeah obviously, that concept of God's there. Yeah, not quite exactly but what it is. Yeah. But anyway, I'm uh, going tomorrow. So. Uh, Going back to Australia? Yeah, I'm going back to Australia. I'll be uh, I'll be back. I think probably before the end of the year um, uh, for a week or two. Um, so um, it's been great catching up with all of you. Oh, thank you. Uh, mm -hmm. time. Yeah. And uh, enjoy the future. <laughs> the main thing is to start enjoying doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Robin, Robin, I know you were avoiding I worked on it last week. <laughs> okay. yeah. It's the hard emotions um, that are obviously difficult to face, but they're usually there, they're usually right there, ready mm -hmm. to deal with. It's just whether you want to choose to deal with it or not. Yeah. yeah. And the key, 
So the key, and that's what I'm saying, not to supply you, the key is to do the emotional work, to do that work and to not avoid it, not run away from it. Every time you run away, you, you're breaking the law that's going to harm your own soul. Because one of the laws of natural love is a love of self. And every time you treat yourself badly, and part of treating yourself badly is to not experience an emotion that's within you, whether that emotion is painful or pleasurable, it doesn't matter. If you choose to not experience it, yeah. you are breaking a law of love towards yourself. And there will always be a penalty associated with that. When I say a penalty, it's not like we have to worry about it, it's just going to create more sadness within your own soul. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So that's why it's so important to focus on the emotional, the emotional work, the stuff that's inside. Because there are very, very much... One of the things I haven't talked much about with different groups uh, until recently are the laws surrounding love, the laws of natural love and the laws of divine love. But one of the laws of natural love is if you treat yourself badly, if we can use the term badly, mm -hmm. which means to treat yourself in disharmony with love, then you will feel the penalties within yourself of that. Yeah. And, and a lot of people don't, are not aware that when you choose to not experience an emotion within yourself, you are now being unloving towards yourself. So a lot of people would say, I'm avoiding pain, so that's being loving. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's actually the opposite. Okay. Right? If you avoid any emotion, whether it be pain or pleasure, you are actually treating yourself unlovingly. Okay. Right? Because the soul, remember the soul is your emotion. That's the real you. Your real you is your emotion. So if you deny a part of the real you, are you loving you? Obviously not. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And there is a law involved in the in the natural the natural law that's about about love that will affect that process. So if you deny the emotion that's within, you selectively push down an emotion within. You are now not loving yourself, and there are penalties associated with the act of not loving yourself, just like there are penalties associated with the act of not loving someone else. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. From God's perspective, you are of same value as the next person. So if I treat Natalie badly, then obviously there's going to be penalties on my soul about that treatment of Natalie. Does that make sense? But if I treat myself badly, exactly the same penalties will result on my soul. Because I am just as important in God's eyes as Natalie is. Does that make sense? And not... Re and, and not Experiencing the emotions, it's like swallowing them and getting a stomach ache. That's right. We, 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 need to, we need to really experience them and let them out. That's so, right. Uh, yeah. That's and they're, they're, not, they're not toxic if they're going out. That's right. They're, they're not they're, toxic they're, if they're flowing. But they're like weight upon us. That's right. As soon as they're frozen, as soon as they are stopped from flowing, they become toxic. Mm -hmm. yeah. One of my pictures of myself at the time has been uh, more like in Scrooge, the Christmas Carol, the ghost of Christmas is past, is dragging all these chains through. Yeah. And, and there was a while a flashback on that picture. And said, Man, I got a lot of work to do. Yeah. <laughs> so like, we're like, often like this, this person who wants to fly, dragging along all of these yeah. lead weights behind us that we're chained to, and we're unwilling to drop them. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. we hold on. Yeah. We're, 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 all we got to do is unhook them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But, and, and the but, process of unhooking them is, can be a painful process. Yeah, it's a pain. It, it's bringing them up and facing them. Looking yes. at looking myself in the mirror and seeing a picture I don't like. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. So the key is to have the courage to actually face those things. Uh -huh. Have the courage within yourself, and and don't and forget don't forget too that courage can come from outside of you too. You know, if you spend time with people who are dealing with their emotions, you will automatically have more courage to deal with your own. If you spend time with God, who wants you to deal with your emotion, you will obviously have more courage to deal with your own. Uh, if you spend time with a group of people who don't want you to deal with a single emotion, then obviously your own courage to deal with your own emotions will, and your own desire to deal with your own emotions will lessen. Because it just rubs off, just like anything else.
So that's what I'd like to encourage. <laughs> so I just wonder what kind of a group this is. <laughs> In this room. <laughs> Uh, it was a hoot last week because you guys were all talking about how exactly how you felt, every little thing, and I was like, wow. You know, I was just like, okay, well, let me see if I can feel something. <laughs> you know? Yeah. At the start, it's difficult because you're so used to suppression. And, uh, and when we're so used to suppression, we suppress a lot of things. So we get to a stage almost of numbness where we don't even know whether we feel anything really. You know, we don't feel anything bad, but we don't feel anything good either. And that's because in the end, if you push, it's like the soul, you, you remember the soul is like your, uh, so this is your soul. Your soul is your passions and emotions and desires and so forth, right? <laughs> Now, if you, uh, here's your mind, right? Your soul is constantly influencing your mind. Right? Now, if I have a desire in your soul, in the soul that says, um, I don't want pain. Couldn't fear be over there too? Well, fear is an emotion. Okay. Yep. So let's say that the, the emotion that I have is I don't want pain, right? In fact, I'm in a state of panic. Let's say I panic when I think about pain. Like I'm terrified of pain. Now, if I'm terrified of pain, the feeling going to the mind is avoid all pain. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So what will the mind do? The mind is just this computer, right? It's this processing unit that's going to do exactly what it's told. Mm -hmm. uh, and if it's, if it's being told, avoid all pain, avoid all pain, avoid all pain, from the soul, because the soul's in a state of panic about pain, then the mind will be working against you to feel the panic. Does that make sense? Of mm -hmm. pain. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times the pain has stopped, like it stopped when you were five, six, seven, eight, whatever, right? A lot of times. But because of the feeling of panic, this, this emotion is just frozen within you, right? And if we have a viewpoint of, I don't want pain, in other words, we are saying that we can select. Right? We're saying that we can select emotion. And it's not true. The truth is, we can't select emotion. We need to feel all the emotions. Eventually, when you feel them all and let them all flow through you, you will no longer have the emotion of panic within you. But at some point, you're going to have to feel the emotion of panic to have it released. But if the mind's getting fed this avoid everything, avoid all pain, avoid all pain, avoid all pain, then the mind will go off and say, all right, what do I do, what do I do now? You know, how many of you have felt bored? Mm -hmm. Bored is avoidance of something. Mm -hmm. But how many of you feel like you've got to eat even when you're not really hungry? Mm -hmm. huh? yeah. That's yeah. avoidance of something. Yeah. How, many of, how many of you have felt like you've got to watch telly Right? You just gotta watch it, you just you can't you don't even, you can't even can't even control this eye, you just gotta go and do it, you gotta have a switch down, right? That's an avoidance of an emotion. Does that make sense? It's the soul saying avoid all pain. Every single if every desire you have is not motivated purely, in other words, motivated through an emotion that's harmonious with love, then it's motivated through then another emotion which is usually panic or you could say terror or fear, right? And if it's the fear that's coming up, and you're not conscious of the fear, and all you're doing is avoiding all pain, you're actually trying to avoid the terror or fear that you feel, right? When you do that, your mind is just going to kick in the deer and it's going to help you do it as much as you want, right? Until you have the courage to actually say to yourself, and actually feel it within yourself. I feel I want to feel everything, even if it is painful. I still want to feel it. I just feel some of it at a time. <laughs> <laughs> some of it. <laughs> everything all at once. <laughs> the soul is not made to feel it. You will not feel everything all at once. 
Does that make sense? Yeah. You will only feel what the soul feels it's capable of expressing. You cannot feel all of your negative emotions or the emotions that were caused from childhood that are painful. You won't feel them all at once. Right? The soul will just give it to you with a constant stream until it's gone. Yeah, because I, I think it's, it's just like they're knocking. I feel something, and you're like, oh, what's that feeling? It's like it's, you, it's like it's going, you, you ready to listen? Yeah, but, know, yeah but, but the problem yeah. for yourself, if I can be more specific okay. with your, okay. your situation, is that you do wish to avoid the pain. Right? There is this feeling. Yeah. Yeah, okay. You want to run away from it. Okay. Right? You want to away, run away from certain issues that would help you immensely, but you want to run away from them. Now, up to now, you've been choosing to do that mm -hmm. over and over and over, saying to yourself, I'm not ready, I'm not ready, I'm not ready. Okay. Ready is just a choice. Does that make sense? But it's not a choice of this. It's a choice in here. Okay. It's a choice inside you emotionally. You can tell yourself you're ready all you want here, but unless it's a feeling here where you really no longer want to go down this painful road of detuning from yourself and you now want to change it and you set your another quality of the soul is intention and you're willing to set your intention differently, until you do that, nothing will change. It's only when you set your intention differently. So let's say my intention is to avoid all pain. Then I will continue avoiding all pain and trying to avoid all pain. And ironically, I will get more pain. Does that make sense? That, that is a natural result of breaking the law, is more pain. But and when I say breaking law, when you, I'm saying, if you're avoiding an emotion within you, remember I said earlier, you are not loving you. Mm -hmm. And if you're not loving you, then that's the same as you not loving someone else. There is a penalty associated with your choice to not love yourself. Does that make sense? Yeah. And not feeling an emotion, whether that emotion be panic or pain or any other emotion, is a choice to not love you. Yeah? And at some stage you need to decide, set your intention to do that differently. But that is your choice too. You have free will, so everyone has the choice to either stay in this state of avoidance, stay, stay in this state of avoiding and using the mind to filter and select, or go into this now state of setting your intention to do it totally differently, to experience everything, to actually go through everything. And when you set that intention, that will be the time when all of the things around you operate in such a way to trigger the, the emotions in you to change. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And when, when that happens, a lot of the emotions that first come up will be the most painful ones, often. Right? The reason why is because if you release the most painful ones, then obviously you will grow very rapidly. Right? And most people at soul level, once they set their intention to grow, they want to grow as fast as they possibly can. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. yeah. It's sort of like, if, you're, if the plane's going down, you throw out the heavy stuff first. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's exactly right. Yeah. And, if, you know, and, and that's exactly what it is emotionally, too. Mm -hmm. you, you think about it, if you're dragging along weights, which one's the best one to let go of first? <laughs> well, the, the, one. the one that's the biggest, isn't it? Yeah. Really. But often what we do is the opposite way around. We skirt around this issue, skirt around that issue, skirt around this issue. We're getting rid of these little tiny weights, you know. I, would like, oh, I had a great realisation last week. Was that? And I say, oh, often this happens where I've talked to somebody, let's say, um, like, this happens a lot with women with regard to fear, in that there's this emotion within them due to the abuse of the childhood you know, maybe sexual abuse or childhood abuse that's occurred. And they're saying to me, oh, I had this wonderful realisation last week about this particular thing over here. And I said, but, but what about this big thing over here, right? <laughs> this, this abuse thing, you know, this big one, you know, this big one here. <laughs> and, you know, it's amazing, you know, how they'll respond in many cases to, it, to actually deal with that. that. They'd rather go around and deal with all these little things, right? And, and say, I'm not ready for that one. And I'm not ready for that. I'm not ready. And, it, and it's not that I'm not ready, because it's been there forever, right? Or, you know, since, from, from their perspective, it feels like it's been there forever, right? It's just that they're choosing to not want it. 
that's all. I'm choosing to not want to deal with that one. The key is understand too that God will actually assist you through the emotions if you desire God to assist. Right? So it's not like you're doing all this alone. Right? There is there are people, spirits, and people on earth. But even if there's no one on earth, there are spirits, your God, and there is God who desperately want you to release this weight that you tra travel around with. Yeah? But in the end, they are very respectful of your intention. Mm -hmm. right? Do you ever find that your emotions kind of go in layers? Like maybe there was an original cause when you were a child, and that caused something else, which caused something else. And so when you're trying to deal with the emotions, you start from the top and you work your way back. Spot on. Yeah. And it often happens where you've got the onion layer effect, so you've got cause. Uh, one, of the, one of the things that we go through is cause and effect. And you've got this cause and effect thing going. So let's say, let's say the, real, the real root cause of, of something might have happened when you were one or something, one year old, one year old event, that caused a certain effect. And because you reacted to those effects a certain way, that caused you to have another emotion of, say, fear. And then whenever you acted in fear, you got punished. So that caused the feeling that you'd be punished and, and so forth. And you get this layered effect of your emotion. Yeah. And then you may not even remember the original cause. Certainly, certainly. But if you allow yourself to just feel what you currently feel right at this moment, right. You can peel away the layers. Right. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's when you shut down even the current expression of emotion. And remember the law of attraction. So the law of attraction is going to expose the current emotion, in particular, so that you can get down through the layers. Yeah. So so let's say I'm driving along in traffic, and the first emotion I feel is anger. Feel it. Let yourself go deeper, and let yourself really feel it. Like when you get home. Get out a box and bag, whatever, just yell and scream and punch. Don't, don't just feel it for 10 seconds and suppress it. Does that make sense? When you do that, there goes the anger. Right? Now I'll find some causes underneath the anger once that starts happening. Does that make sense? Yeah. Definitely a layer, but definitely a layer. All of our emotions are layered. We could be underlying the cause when a man, particularly, usually men, because I have spoken to other women, and in the traffic, when they're held up in any way, the person going in front of them has the foot in the brake, all the red light comes, they get this anger about that. You can't control those things. It's so stupid to be angry. Yeah, but, but anger is an effect as well. On what? Who could you find fault with a red light? Well, you can find fault with anything when you're angry. <laughs> you can be loving to a person and not get angry with you if they're angry. Life's <laughs> bad, I guess. Yeah, but anger has a cause. So you need to allow yourself to feel the anger, and as you do, what you will happen is you will identify the underlying causes. Mm -hmm. I don't get angry. I just don't see red lights. I just stop. You know, it's all I don't question it. Yeah. Not my husband. Oh. They do that to him personally. <laughs> <laughs> and so the emotion within him is, I'm getting treated badly. Yes. I'm being yeah. put under control. I'm being controlled. They saw him coming. In the <laughs> so he needs to go further into that emotion. Does that make sense? What does it feel like to be in control? He needs to actually feel the feelings of being controlled and being out mm -hmm. out of his own control. In other words. He doesn't want other people to control He's a him. very controlled person. He controls it himself. And, and is involved. Yeah, 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 tries to. Tries to. It's impossible to. Of course. Of course. <laughs> yeah. Does that make sense? And yeah, if, he can listen, yeah. if he feels the anger first and really experiences it, then he'll go into the deeper emotions of, I feel controlled. What does that feel like? Where did this begin? Yeah. And so forth. And he'll be able to find the cause of that. So everyone's emotions are all traceable back to a cause. You have to feel them. Yeah. So when you talk about, you, you're saying the emotions happen first, that confuses me because I feel like the emotions come from a thought that you have set some sort of um, rule for yourself or something and then 
it, it, or someone else has set one for you, and then it gets broken, or you, and then you have, feel fear, or you feel, you know, bad about it, and so what comes first, the chicken or the egg? And the answer is the emotion comes first, but most people um, are not aware of the original causal emotions, because the original causal emotions began when you were in your mother's womb. In other words, before you had any conscious thoughts. What happened was that as soon as you incarnated, as soon as you incarnate into the physical form, but when you incarnate, it's, uh, I, don't, I, I don't know if I've talked to you about this, but you, let's say that's your soul, your soul splits into two, right? So there's, you are half of the soul and then someone else in this world is another half of your soul. And your soul is attached to a spirit body and a material body. And the spirit body and the material body are created at the time of conception. And your soul incarnates and, and attaches itself to those bodies. And they become the expression of this soul. Now, this soul, which is your emotions, desires, passions, and all those kind of things, begins absorbing everything from its environment at the time of, shortly after the time of conception. Now, if your mother has emotions of frustration, anger, sadness, fear, and all those kind of feelings, your soul will automatically absorb those. If your father has emotions of hatred of women or, you know, lots of different emotions that met the father might have, your soul automatically absorbs all of those. By the way, your soul also absorbs all the good feelings that they have as well. So if they have pleasurable feelings about some things, then your soul will also absorb So kind of like both. your karma started Yeah, that's right, from the moment of conception, if you like. Now, that soul then, even before it's born, is full of emotions already. And that begins to attract other situations to start triggering these emotions automatically. So the law of attraction begins right from, unfortunately, right from the time of conception onwards. Does that make sense? Yeah. And then as that occurs, the purpose of that is to expose these emotions and work through them. But unfortunately, very few people on earth actually do work through their emotions or even teach their children to work through their emotions. And so there's more emotions get dumped, more emotions get dumped on this soul. And now as those more emotions get dumped, the law of attraction works to try and expose those emotions as well. So there's more, more events being attracted to, attract, to, to deal with those emotions too. And so you get this long sequence of events then that seem traumatic or that can occur to that soul. But it's all based around the fact the original what you would call the generational effects of disharmony with love being imposed upon the soul right at the beginning of the incarnation. So what comes first is yes, the emotion comes first and those emotions cause events to occur because of the laws of attraction and those events then, if you like, get filtered into our belief systems, our beliefs, and they then reinforce in our emotional condition. Right? Now, it's those beliefs and emotions combined that cause us to have thoughts, new thoughts. So that's why some people, like I know this lady, for example, in, in Australia, every time she sees a moth, like just a small little moth, she panics. She reacts the same way most people would to a gun being pointed at her head, but because of a moth. Does that make sense? No. Why does she? Well, it doesn't really make sense, does it? But that's what happened. <laughs> the reason why was when she was tiny, before she even had a thought, her brother put a moth inside of her baby clothes and she went into a panic. Does that make sense? Because yes. she didn't know what it was and her brother was intended to scare her a bit. And she went into this panic, yelling and screaming and yelling and screaming and everything. And eventually they found the moth and pulled it out. Right? But that one event now has caused her, she's never released the emotion, and that now causes her to panic every time she sees a moth. So she's, she'll walk up to a door in the middle of it, you know, how you have the light on outside and there's moths around it. She, she can't walk through that door. Now, this lady is a police officer. Oh, so she's not afraid of anything else. <laughs> Does that make sense? 
But it's because the emotion caused a set of, like there was an event that caused, that in her case caused a set of emotions, right? She now has this belief, and this belief is just, like, it, it now dominates her life in a lot of ways. Just something really simple. So, it is true also that forward, further thoughts can cause further emotions, of course. So, you can certainly, you can certainly um, have, a, have a thought that will now trigger another set of emotions, but only if there is a resonant set of emotions that resonate with that thought, generally. So, for example, if you've got a fear of death inside, and then a plane crash occurs, and you were going to take off from the same airport that that plane was taken off from, right? the thought will probably come into your mind of fear of not to do that. Right? And it came from an earlier event, really, this feeling, the feeling with inside the fear that already existed, and then it being triggered by a subsequent event. And that creates another thought which creates more fear and so forth. But certainly the emotion comes first. If you, what I've found is if you let go of all the emotion, you no longer have any thoughts of fear or anything. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah. yeah. And so, you know, so the same event can occur, but for, instance, for example, I used to be petrified of dogs. Um, in my childhood I had three dogs bite me uh, because of my fear of dogs. And once I work through all of my fears, I walk along now and an angry dog will come up and sniff me and, want, and wag its tail and, want, and, it, and yet go up to somebody else and be quite angry. Before, I was the one it would come up to <laughs> and get angry and bite me, right? Yeah. And, and I, I didn't change anything in myself aside from re feeling the fear and processing the fear and going through that process and, and releasing it. I had, a, uh, I had another thing where I, Every time I was with a cat, my eyes would just stream and water. I was just so allergic to cats. And I couldn't work out what it was about, because I wasn't afraid of cats. But my eyes would just stream water. And then I, after a series of processing emotions, I found, I found within myself that I had a belief that my father, my father had cats. And my father used to, any cat that walked through the yard, he'd just shoot it. Right? And uh, yeah, any cat, any cat around my dad does not survive. And so I, when I was very, very young, had this feeling that if I loved cats, my father would not love me. Does that make sense? Yeah. And once I went through that emotion, I was no longer allergic to cats anymore. Yeah. So you'll find lots of these relationships when you work through your emotions all these sort of relationships. I used to have a, I used to lay on a lawn, we used to have couch grass at home, and I used to lay on the lawn, and I'd get all of these allergy spikes, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, like little pinpricks from the couch grass. Mm -hmm. and, um, and like, one thing I've realised is that anything that happens to me that doesn't make sense in harmony with God, so in other words, if God created the lawn, God created me, right? Yeah. Then obviously, if the lawn and me are not agreeing, <laughs> there must be an emotion within me that causes that to occur. It's like if the cat and me are not agreeing, there must be an emotion in me that's created that, you see. And the more you allow yourself to go down that track, the more, the more you release. What you find will happen is that you'll get to a point where you realise all of these relationships. And in my case, I'm not allergic to plants anymore, but I used to be. But I had to deal with a lot of different emotions of what caused those allergies. Right. Yeah. And they were all emotional. The whole lot was emotional. Yeah. I used to have a... You know sometimes when you're in a dust storm or you, it's a dusty home mm -hmm. or whatever, you have the smell of dust? Mm -hmm. You know that smell? And as soon as I had that smell, I would get asthma. Mm -hmm. right? and I used to get asthma as a child until... Until I was 33 years of age, I used to have asthma pretty much constantly. And I've been hospitalised a number of times with the asthma uh, as well. So I used to have it quite bad. 
And uh, a lot of it was related to any time dust was around, bang, I got asthma. Any time there was a wheat, smell, wheat grass smell around, I'd get asthma. I just had to smell it and I got asthma. And, uh, and again, I thought, you know, it's just because I've got asthma, I'm allergic to all these things and I went down that trap for a while and then started realising it must be all emotional. Once I worked through the connections of what was actually going on and realised that it was connected to certain events in my life, once I actually allowed myself to experience those events emotionally, because the emotion was just frozen within me, and release those, I no longer have that reaction to dust or to wheat or to any plants like that anymore. Yeah. Does that make sense? So, mm -hmm. all of them are emotions in the end. Everything. If, Everything. Is what if it was, um, I don't know, a reaction to something man made prescription? Does that apply too? Well, no. I, no. I often have reactions to man made things. Um, and I, what I've learned from that is that. Um, Man-made things are very poisonous to the body, and and yes, you will need to work through why you want to take something that's poisonous to your body, or why you feel you need to take it. Mm -hmm. What I've found now is that I don't have to take any medication or anything like that, whereas I used to take lots, um, and I'm I'm even very sensitive to chemicals in foods now, with that I wasn't sensitive to before. Yeah. So. That's become the opposite as well. The more in harmony with in the natural environment I'm becoming, the less in harmony with the manufactured environment I've become. Whereas before I was in very much in harmony with the manufactured environment and the natural environment I would have all these reactions to. Yeah. And that's changed to be the opposite. So you will become more sensitive. Yeah. Uh, two, two things that are in disharmony with God as well. And manufacturing chemicals that harm or impact upon mm -hmm. the flow of, of energy in your body is certainly going to cause damage to you. Mm. Anyway, that's me done for the day. Is that right? Thank you, Thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you.